Uh, the Chair now recognizes our colleague from Alabama, Mr. Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to go back to you, Mr. Grossman, and the point you were about to make. Uh, the President has made it clear that he doesn't plan to submit any agreement reached in Paris to the Senate. Um, does the position of Congress, the official position of Congress on a particular policy issue have any bearing on whether or not the agreement requires congressional approval? Um, thank you, Mr. Henderson. The answer is yes. Um, Congress's position uh, makes a, a, a great deal of difference, uh, particularly in this instance, uh, because potentially the administration, if there were some kind of binding agreement, might point to the framework convention, uh, perhaps as supporting that. And uh, were there any legal challenge over that, uh, the first thing that courts would look to would be congressional understanding right. of what that is. All right. Let me. Um I have a little short clip I'd like to show if uh, if the staff can put that up that I think um, might bring some clarity to uh, where Congress is on this. Can can they do the video? Most members on this committee, I think the Supreme Court came up with a very much erroneous decision on whether the Clean Air Act covers greenhouse gases. Like many of the members of this committee, I was present when we wrote that legislation, and we thought it was clear enough that it did not, that we didn't clarify it, thinking that even the Supreme Court was not stupid enough to make that finding. Thank you. Um, it is. Um, is there any ambiguity there, Mr. Grossman? Uh, no, there is not. Um, I don't think that it's, it's an issue here in regard to the legality of what the President is doing as to whether or not we should debate this issue. Clearly, we should. I, I think that uh, Congress has debated this issue. It's been pointed out that Congress uh, brought up a cap-and-trade bill, which is uh, arguably the same thing as the Clean Power Plan, and uh, rejected it. It was passed by the House, but rejected by the Senate. And I would like to point out that uh, my colleagues on the Democrat side control both houses of Congress. So Congress has spoken. Uh, you just heard from a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, I think that was in 2009, who was present as a member of Congress when the Clean Power, uh, when the uh, Cleaner Act was passed. And it's clear that it was never the intention of Congress to um, give the executive branch through the EPA the authority to regulate greenhouse gases. So back to your point, I, I think this is relevant. Uh, I think that uh, we talk about the danger of, of global climate change, but I think there is another danger here that needs to be addressed, and that is the loss of, of the authority of Congress to make laws. So I, I, I think uh, there is another point I want to make, uh, Dr. Lomborg. Uh, uh, are you familiar with a paper that was published, I think it was last year, by uh, Dr. Philip J. Lloyd, who was uh, one of the um, lead authors for the International Pan Panel on Climate Change? Uh, uh, and he, he says that he now concludes that uh, the majority of climate change is uh, the result of natural variation. Are you familiar with that? I am not, I'm not sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, I would like to uh, enter this this abstract into the record, if, if uh, we may do so. Without objection. Thank you. I think that uh, if climate change is predominantly the result of uh, natural variation, I think it would uh, logic would require us to uh, put as much emphasis on on dealing with the consequences of climate change as a result of natural variation, uh, maybe even more so. Uh, as the science continues to evolve on this, then uh, spending enormous amounts of uh, money and resources on uh, human activities. Uh, would you agree with that, Dr. Lomborg? So yes or no? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I think um, uh, to you, um, Dr. Steer, and your comments about uh, uh, forcing people into smaller and smaller environments and living spaces and, and changing their cultures and how they live reminds me of a book that came out in 1978 by a guy named Clarence B. Carson 
the world in the grip of an idea, and, and his point, if I may simplify it, is basically that uh, there's always this great idea out there that empowers government to, to do things that people don't want it to do. To, and in this case, it's achieving uh, uh, human progress through saving the planet and, and focusing everyone's efforts on that and using government power as the instrument to achieve that end. Uh, my time has expired. I yield, Mr. Chairman.